Hey, you doing? I'm Callan and this is Slapped Ham. Today we're once again looking at some unsolved cases. From detailed stories of a possible past life to a mysterious skull that might just be from out of this world. We take a look at five baffling and unexplained events from the past. But before we get into it, remember to hit that subscribe button for more awesome, creepy content just like this. In Chihuahua, Mexico, sometime around 1930, a very strange discovery was made. A girl who was looking around an old mine found the skull of a child hidden within the tunnels. What was especially unique about this skull was its unusual shape and size. Overall, the skull was small and seemed to be that of a child. What made it so unusual, however, was the fact that the skull had an abnormally large cranium, the size of which would normally be seen in an average adult. It also had other abnormalities including shallow eye sockets, a lack of frontal sinuses, and the back of the skull was flatter than a normal skull. In February 1999, paranormal researcher Lloyd Pye obtained the skull. It was Pye's opinion that the abnormally shaped skull was proof of an alien-human hybrid. He launched a research project that he named the Star Child Project to prove his theory. It was determined that the skull was approximately 900 years old and had belonged to a female child who was roughly 4 to 6 years old. During examination it was discovered that the skull had a larger than normal inner ear, which could have resulted in this individual having the ability to hear higher sound frequencies than the average human. DNA testing also proved to be anomalous, with large amounts of the DNA not being found in any of the available databases. The skull was also found to have odd fibres in the bone when it was examined with an electron microscope. Pi considered all of this information to be proof that the skull was the result of an alien-human hybridisation. Skeptics however disagreed. A Yale University neurologist believed the skull showed the characteristics of a child with hydrocephalus, which is a condition that causes the brain to accumulate fluid and the skull to broaden. The star child skull showed no signs of swelling or expansion however, making it more likely that the child was born with an abnormally large cranium. Much controversy still surrounds this skull. Even today, it still has its fair share of believers and skeptics, and the star child project is still active today. On February 14th, 1945, a horrific violent act took the life of 74-year-old Warwickshire, England native Charles Walton. Witchcraft and revenge seemed to be at the heart of this terrible crime. Charles Walton spent most of his days working for several farms in the area. He was generally liked by the locals, but many thought that he was just a little strange and there was even whispers that he was a practicing witch or a cultist. It was said that Walton could call wild birds to his hand and that he had the ability to tame feral dogs just with his voice alone. Walton had a deep understanding of local folklore and traditions, so much so that it, along with his uncanny ability with animals, made some of the more superstitious locals a little wary of him. Still, it didn't seem as if Walton had very many enemies. On the night of February 14th, Walton's niece Eddie arrived home at their cottage at around 6pm, only to discover that her uncle hadn't arrived yet. This was highly unusual and Eddie became concerned that her uncle had been in an accident or possibly fallen ill. She contacted a neighbour and they went to search for him. Walton had last been seen working on a farm in Meon Hill, an area known for mystical legends of ghostly hounds and sightings of the devil himself. Walton was quickly found dead in a ditch. His trouncing hook had been driven into his throat, a pitchfork was used to pin him to the ground, and a large cross was carved into his chest, creating a horrific bloody scene. It was believed by the local community as well as law officers that witchcraft may have been involved in the death of Charles Walton. Many speculated that whoever killed Walton did so in a ritualistic manner to break a curse or prevent bewitchment by Walton. It's interesting to note that during the investigation, police found a copy of the 1929 book Folklore, Old Customs and Superstitions in Shakespeare Land in Walton's Cottage. The book refers to a man named Charles Walton dying of fright after encountering a ghost in 1885. Some people speculated that the Charles Walton mentioned in the book was the same Charles Walton who was murdered in 1945. The police were never able to identify a suspect in the murder, and the mysterious death of Charles Walton remains unsolved. 
Also known as the Grand Grimoire, the Gospel of Satan and the Red Dragon, the Devil's Book is an ancient tome surrounded in supernatural mystery. No one in recent history has actually ever seen the book, but its existence is considered to be factual due to the fact that the Roman Catholic Church has made official statements of ownership. The book itself has a dark history. It was discovered in 1750 in Jerusalem within the tomb of Solomon, but it was thought to have been written somewhere around the year 1522 AD, based on a date inscribed within its pages. It was speculated that the book was actually copied from an earlier tome that was written sometime in the 1200s AD. The book that it was thought to have been copied from was the Sworn Book of Honorius, which was written by Honorius of Thieves sometime before 1227 AD. It was rumoured that Honorius was possessed by Satan with the sole purpose of writing the book, which gives detailed instructions on how to summon lesser demons as well as Satan himself to this realm of existence. There are a number of stories attached to the grimoire that claim that it has some sort of supernatural power all on its own. It's been stated that the book is resistant to any sort of harm, including incineration, cutting and tearing. It's also considered to be the only book that gives accurate details on how to conjure Satan into a physical form. There are a number of books available today that claim to be copies of the Devil's Book but ultimately no one will ever be able to verify any of the details about the original. The Grand Grimoire is keeping its secrets locked in the vaults of the Vatican's secret archives. So are human Zs, chimpanzee, human hybrids an actual reality? According to some, the curious case of Oliver the Chimp is proof of the existence of the human Z. Oliver first came to public attention when animal trainers Frank and Janet Berger acquired him in 1960. The Burgers immediately noticed some marked differences between Oliver and other chimps. Oliver was predominantly bipedal, more often walking on two feet rather than walking on feet and knuckles the way other chimps do. Oliver's face was also flatter, he had less hair, a smaller cranium and a smaller chin than average chimps. Even more unusual was Oliver's behaviour. He preferred the company of humans to chimps and he was known to enjoy the occasional cocktail. It was even thought that Oliver preferred human females to female chimpanzees as potential mates. The Burgers had to sell Oliver when he was 16 years old due to an increasing fixation on Janet Berger. His new owner, Michael Miller, featured him as the missing link in several exhibits before selling Oliver to Ken DeCrew, owner of the Wild Animal Training Center. DeCrew sold Oliver in 1985 because he didn't get along well with other chimps in the exhibit. Oliver was then purchased by the Buckshear Corporation, a leasing facility for lab animals in 1989. He was confined to a lab cage for nine years before making his way to Primarily Primates, an animal sanctuary in 1998. Oliver lived there peacefully until he passed away on June 2, 2012. So what exactly was Oliver? Some individuals firmly believe that Oliver was a human-chimp hybrid. At least two DNA tests were performed, with one claiming that Oliver had the normal 48 chromosomes of a chimp, while the other claimed that he only had 47 chromosomes, falling between the chimpanzee 48 and the human 46. Scientists state that Oliver's physical traits fall within the normal range of common chimpanzee traits, but theorists argue against this point, noting that Oliver had numerous unusual physical traits, not just one or two that might be found in normal chimps. The mystery of Curious Oliver is still debated today. Before we get to that number one spot and take a look at a curious case of hypnotic regression and accounts of a past life, remember to hit that subscribe button and turn on channel notifications. That way you'll be completely up to date with all our latest content. A strange event was uncovered when Virginia Teague underwent hypnotic regression on a whim during a 1952 dinner party. Amateur hypnotist Maury Bernstein placed Teague in a trance and soon the Colorado housewife was speaking in a thick Irish brogue. While in trance, Teague began to tell Bernstein about her life as an 1800s Irish woman named Bridie Murphy. Teague went into a lot of detail stating that she lived with her father and mother Duncan and Kathleen Murphy in Cork in 1806. 
Teague went on to say that she married Sean McCarthy when she was 17 years old, relocating with her husband to Belfast. Teague even revealed how she died in her previous life. She said that as Bridie, she took a bad fall that resulted in her passing. She even described her funeral and her tombstone. When asked about life after death, Teague stated that it was a feeling of neither pain nor happiness. A lot of controversy has surrounded the case of Bridie Murphy. Skeptics point out that investigation into the legitimacy of Teague's claims only took place after Bernstein had already written his book, The Search for Bridie Murphy. They went on to note that many of the details, including the existence of Bridie Murphy, couldn't be verified, placing doubt on Teague's claim of reincarnation. Other details that Teague mentioned were verified, however, including travel details of her journey from Cork to Belfast, as well as the existence of St. Teresa's, the church that Bridie Murphy was supposed to have attended. The case of Bridie Murphy is still a favourite reference for both sceptics and believers of reincarnation. The truth behind the mystery died with Virginia Teague when she passed away on July 12, 1995. Well, there's another episode down. Thank you so much for watching. Now, in the comments section below, let us know if any of these stories have plausible explanations. Slap that thumbs up button as well, because it lets us know you're enjoying the content. And that's it for me. I'll see you all next time. 